Good afternoon, fellow high staters. This is Paul Gordon of iState.tv, and this is your daily dose of headlines you may have missed for Wednesday, January 31st, 2018. You give us 20 minutes, and we'll give you headlines that aren't dominated with fear porn. We'll give you headlines of awareness, hope, action, and yeah, maybe just a little bit of lulls. Now, today's show title is Crypto Nationalistas of Belarus. And you can get show notes at isheadlines.com. That's isheadlines.com. On this show, crypto nationalism, e waste to 3D gold, Catalan defiance, Facebook crypto crap, and more. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here is your headlines you may have missed. Belarus becoming cryptocurrency friendly. While many nations of the world are scrambling to figure out how to rein in cryptocurrencies, Belarus is busy working on creating a better, safer, freer environment for the cryptocurrency marketplace. And this story is from Bitcoin Magazine. Cryptocurrency friendly regulations in Belarus could attract foreign capital and ICOs. At the end of 2017, Belarus President Alejandro Lukashenko signed a digital economy development ordinance aimed at developing the country's IT sector and attracting blockchain technology companies, capital, and talent from all over the world. Belarus becomes the first state in the world which opens up broad opportunities for the use of blockchain technology, said Lukashenko. We have all opportunities to become a regional center of competence in this field. So while all these other nation states are scrambling to figure out how to get a bead on uh, controlling this blockchain cryptocurrency stuff. You're going to have countries like Belarus that are going to see an advantage here. Huh? Okay. Oh, you guys are going to make it more difficult for people to to start these cryptocurrency businesses. I tell you what. I tell you what, man. I tell you what. We're going to go ahead and we're going to pass pass us some laws that make it easier for people to, to come to our state and do business and make our state money and drive our economy because because that's the way it works so belarus moving towards crypto nationalistahood uh hats off to you that's moving in the right direction as far as i'm concerned a trade war with the u.s might be china's only choice is a trade war with China becoming increasingly more likely as China runs out of reasons to not carry through with their many threats against the U.S.? Should it do what Trump has begun to do? Hit it with tariffs? And this is from Forbes, and their headline is, China may be running out of cards to play in a bid to avoid a trade war with the U.S., why has China suddenly scaled up its provocations, pressed harder on the raw nerves of each of its regional rivalries? One simple answer is that they are now more powerful, no longer content to hide their strength by their time. A more concerning answer is that their long-standing habit of raising the temperature in their traditional hot spots, fully expecting the U.S., to worry about the chaos that might ensue and ease off on the economic pressure no longer works. Trump, in other words, whether by intention or accident, is calling their bluff. Now go to the last part here. Now as the sanctions begin to bite, first on steel and aluminum, then on washing machines and solar panels, and soon with respect to intellectual property violations. Boo, IP. I think every time I say IP, I'm going to have to do that. Boo, IP. China will find itself no longer able to dangle progress on wider strategic matters as a way of forestalling a potential trade war and will instead have to make good on their threats. It is in this light that China's escalating strategic challenge should be seen not as a coherent vision of China's future, 
but an attempt to raise the stakes in a game of strategic poker rapidly coming to an end. Micro factories recycle e-waste into 3D printer material. I really, I really love this story. This is, I think that I made this to the, the, yep, this is the I build story of the day. If you go to iState.com, you'll see, uh, iState.tv, you'll see that this is one of the regularly, uh, one of our featured categories on the front of the site. And I, I love the I build category. Vina Sahajwala, Sahajwala, an Australian scientist at the University of New South Wales, has developed microfactories the size of shipping containers to process e-waste and convert it into 3D printer filaments. The project is going on in New South Wales in Australia. As electronic waste, and this is the story is from 3Dears.org, as electronic waste or e-waste continues to pile up in landfills around the world, one Australian scientist may have a viable solution for this mounting environmental threat. According to Vina, that last name, a material scientist, I already said that, we are all micro mine owners. When considering the millions of electronic hardware devices we toss out each year, she pro her, her proclamation, proclamation becomes less of a hyperbole and more literal fact. E-waste, it turns out, is chock full of valuable resources. A ton of cell phones, 6,000 individual devices, breaks down to about 130 kilograms of copper, 3 kilograms of silver, 340 kilograms grams of gold and 140 grams of palladium. So here is a person who saw a problem and went out to solve the problem rather than invoking my laws. She used ingenuity to go out and tackle the problem in a way that benefits, I would say benefits everyone. Cattle in Parliament chooses to delay vote. Remain committed to Pujamont. It looks like the cattle in Parliament is not backing down. Rather than carry out a vote that would have forced them to select a president other than exiled President Carle Puigdemont, the Parliament instead chose to delay the vote. In so doing, they made it clear they were not backing down in their commitment to choose Carle Puigdemont once again as their president. And this is from The Guardian. Their headline version is Carl Catalan Parliament delays vote on leader but backs Pujamont. The Speaker of the Catalan Parliament has postponed the session to invest Carles Pujamont as president, but insisted the deposed former leader remains the only legitimate candidate to form a government after pro-independent parties retained their majority in December snap elections, much to the chagrin and to the uh, horror of Madrid and and really also Brussels, which is the headquarters, the EU headquarters. Despite blunt warnings from the Spanish government that it will not allow Puigdemont to return to office after he fled to Belgium following last October's unilateral declaration of independence, they, Roger Torrance said the investiture of a new president was a matter for the regional parliament alone. So... Catalan, at least the uh, the independence-minded faction of Catalan, remains defiant. Facebook ends all cryptocurrency ads on its platform. So Facebook keeps giving people of liberty more and more reasons to find viable alternatives to the platform. And its latest move, uh, it's taken the dr draconian action of 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 canceling all advertising for cryptocurrencies of all kinds. So what Facebook has decided to do is that it's going to just ban all the cryptocurrency advertising until they can figure out, and these are their words, what, quote, deceptive and misleading advertising practices, unquote, are. And I tell you, I tell you, while you do that, some of us will be heading on over to some alternative social media platforms like steamit.com. You can find me, by the way, there, steamit.com slash 
at Paul Gordon. That's one word. You'll find me there. I, I also post iState stuff there. Or even Minds.com. I haven't quite... My, I, I have an I, Minds account, and I'm not quite using it. But, yeah, I'm, I'm going to be working on that. So the more they do these things, hey, great. The more it's going to incentivize people to find alternative social media platforms that aren't run by neoliberals. That would be great. Face, so this story is from Recode.net. Facebook is banning all ads that promote cryptocurrencies, including Bitcoin, in an effort to prevent people from advertising what the company is calling financial products and services frequently associated with misleading or deceptive promotional practice. That's your Facebook, folks. That's, that's what it's decided. It's decided to totally go all in. We already knew it, but you already knew they were going all in with the course of enterprise, and this is just just a, a sign of that. I, I have a sneaking suspicion that part of the motivation behind doing this is maybe if they feel Dude. they can placate the coercive enterprise so much, so, so to a certain degree, that they will lessen the chance that when the course of enterprise gets around to actually writing those social media regulations and 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 trust me that's coming that that they'll that they'll that not hurt them as much as 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 they might possibly now we get to oh this is right in my neck of the woods i live in pennsylvania here so this is something that sort of affects me although i don't live in philly uh, go Eagles, by the way, this weekend if in the Super Bowl. I'm a f following. I followed the Eagles for 40 years now. So yeah, please win the Super Bowl. Please just put me out of my football misery and and win the Super Bowl finally. But outside of the Eagles and the other Philly sports teams, I don't live in Philly, but I do live in PA. So PA High Court considers legality of Philly soda tax. You just mentioned they're actually considering the legality of the Phil of Philadelphia deciding that it's going to arbitrarily uh, charge you for the privilege of buying a soda, ostensibly because they are trying to prevent you from putting bad things in your body. They are trying to nanny state you and profit. By the way, the profit part is definitely the more important part. I don't don't listen to what they 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 say about trying to prevent you from putting bad things into your body. So, will the Supreme Court, uh, PA Supreme Court, strike down Philly soda tax? Well, that's what's being considered, and this is from Philly.com. The court said it would hear the American Beverage Association and other local businesses' appeal of a Commonwealth Court decision last year to uphold the controversial tax. You mean the overt theft, the shakedown, the interference with commerce. The rest of the country will be watching the outcome. Philadelphia became the first major U.S. city, city to pass a tax on soda in 2016, and a number of other cities have since considered or implemented similar taxes. And they all suck. They all suck. Huge suck. If you could suck huge suck, they suck huge suck. That's a scientific term, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, so, so don't, don't shoot the messenger. Bitfinex and Tether subpoenaed by U.S. regulators. This is this is something to watch uh, very carefully, you you cryptocurrency folks out there, and you know I'm I'm engaging in cryptocurrency as well, so I'm one of them. U.S. regulators have their targets set squarely on crypto exchanges, and they use and they'll use Bitfinex and Tether as their first examples. So this story is from Bloomberg. Their headline is U.S. Regulators Subpoena Crypto Exchanges Bitfinex Tether. U.S. regulators are scrutinizing one of the world's largest cryptocurrency exchanges as questions mount over a digital token linked to its backers. The U.S. Commodity Futures Trading Commission sent subpoenas on December 6th to virtual currency venture Bitfinex and Tether, a company that issues a widely traded coin and claims it's pegged to the dollar, 
according to a person familiar with the matter who asked not to be identified discussing private information. Okay, so it's an anonymous source. Okay. So Tether's coins have become a popular substitute for dollars on cryptocurrency exchanges worldwide worth with about $2.3 billion of the tokens outstanding as of Tuesday. While Tether has said all of its coins are backed by U.S. dollars held in reserve, the company has yet to provide conclusive evidence of its holdings to the public or have its accounts audited. Ooh, are they talking about Tether or are they talking about the Federal Reserve? I, I get so confused because they all, things like this just, just blur into one. I, th I, think, I think my audience probably knows exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, I don't want to audit the Fed, by the way. I want to end it. Apple being investigated by DAJ, DOJ over slowed down iPhones. So now that Apple has admitted it has slowed down older iPhones to get people to buy newer ones, the U.S. Department of Justice is investigating the company over potential, quote, wrongdoing. This is from QZ.com. The U.S. Department of Justice is privately probing Apple to determine whether it violated security laws, securities laws in its disclosure Five of minutes. an update to its mobile operating system that slows down performance on older iPhones, Bloomberg reports. The revelation comes in the run-up to Apple's quarterly earnings on Thursday and amid pressure on the company's shares from reports of lower-than-expected iPhone sales. So I'm, I'm not for this uh, prosecution or investigation or whatever. If, if Apple really did this, uh, a private, private groups need to figure out if they did it and then just let it be known to the public that this is what Apple does. And, and Apple, uh, eh, they're going to make things right or they're going to go out of business because that's what happens when you don't actually serve the people that you want to buy your stuff. Paris, this is a little lulls here. Got to have some lulls. So here we go. This is your moment of lulls. And pardon me for <laughs> the subject matter. This is, this, I'm not endorsing this. I'm just reporting on it. So please don't consider this an, endorse, an endorsement. Paris gets a sex doll brothel. And, it's, and they're called X Dolls. So I love, I love that title, X Dolls. That's, that's wonderful. I endorse the title. I don't endorse what it's for, though. First, there were sex dolls. Now there are sex doll brothels. So Paris gets its first ever sex doll brothel, but it's not the first of its kind in Europe. Paris opens doors to France's first ever sex doll brothel. That's the headline from the local.fr. A new brothel has opened in Paris where customers can pay to fulfill almost all of their sexual desires with silicone dolls. The official X Dolls site advertises that it has three different dolls on offer, Lily, Sophia, and Kim, complete with pictures of Eat. Each, uh, I'll skip through here to find the location, would-be customers have to pay for a session with a doll, which comes at a cost of 89, is that 89 euros for an hour and 149 euros for two hours? I don't know. Is, is that simple for the euro? I, I think so. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong. And 19 euros or whatever it is for the optional virtual reality edition. Uh, but they're not the first of its kind, the first of its kind in Europe, I should say. That that distinction belongs to Barcelona, Barcelona, however you say that, uh, which uh, opened uh, last last Friday. So Barcelona, so, so Catalonia, you're in the news for two things. So there you go. Congratulations. This is our last story here. Try to get through this real quick. Two minutes. Gun support groups lobby against pro-gun New Hampshire bill. So a bill that would fine localities for passing gun control laws that violate state laws is being resisted not just by gun grabbers, but also by alleged gun supporters. That's right. Ostensible pro-gun activists in New Hampshire are pushing against a gun bill that would levy fines on local officials who pass ordinances restricting gun use when such ordinances violate state law. And that's from NHPR.org. Their headline is 
Where's their headline? Unlikely foes of state house gun bill, New Hampshire gun rights group. So you can go to isheadlines.com or you can click on the show notes in the description, whether you're watching Facebook, Facebook or uh, YouTube. And if you're listening to the audio, you're already on the page. So you can click One on minute. the site and read, read more about this. But we're just about out of time and we're down to a minute. So I want to get to some of the headlines that we didn't get to. SEC shuts down PlexCoin. SCOTUS might halt PA court decision against gerrymandering. Well, isn't that nice of them? That they're they're gonna they're gonna prevent. Okay, they're going to prevent PA from stopping gerrymandering. Very undemocratic process. Process for those of you who still believe in the democratic process. Anti EU president reelected in the Czech Republic. Hydroponics to the rescue for Haitian orphanage. UN prepares for a summer assault on gun owners. U.S. releases names of Russian oligarchs and jab seconds. at Putin. Amateur astronomers find long lost sat a uh, amateur astronomer finds long lost satellite. And finally, thanks to deep fakes, Nicolas Cage is now starring in every movie, and it's awesome. And that's it, folks. You know what that when you, when you hear that beep beep beep. What that tells you is we're out of time. That's all we have today for headlines you may have missed. If you would like to read more about the stories we covered today, just go to isheadlines.com and find the show notes for January 31st, 2018. Or again, you can get the show notes in the descriptions for both the Facebook and the YouTube videos. As always, remember, those who need to control thoughts need to control news. Until tomorrow... At 12.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, this is Paul Gordon of iState.tv saying, Have a great rest of your day, fellow iStaters.